Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. If you needed any additional evidence that I'm here under duress, it's an Asian with a banana. He's watching me. So this is a special peek into the brains of the benchmark operation over here, NCIX Wheels. We worked with ASUS and Corsair to bring you this, the Zero Point Machine, which is not related to any Zero Point energy gravity guns or anything like that. What we mean by Zero Point is on a graph where you're measuring relative performance, this will be zero, and something that is 1.2 would be 20% better than this. The reason these components were chosen is they are middle of the road parts that will give you a reference point for the numbers that are provided. So this is what we would deem to be about all you need to run most games at reasonable settings and then from there when you spend less or more we can give you some idea of what you're getting for your money. So let's do a quick tour of the zero point test bench. First up is the ASUS Z87A. This is a no frills, no gimmicks motherboard. So it doesn't have, you know, PLX bridge chips for four way SLI and crossfire and all that kind of stuff. It, uh, you know, just has the things you'd expect. It's LGA 1150, so that's the more mainstream platform, and it's paired up with an Intel Core i5 4670K. That's probably what I would consider to be the highest end component of this rig, but because so many enthusiasts start with the CPU and build around it and go with 4670Ks, that's, well, that's the rationale behind that decision. It has eight gigs of Corsair Vengeance Pro Red. Again, not overkill, but enough that that's what most people are buying. A Corsair H60 for cooling. To be clear, guys, not all pre-filled liquid cooling is built equally, and the H60 is what I'd consider to be the equivalent to a decent air cooling heatsink. It's just convenient when you're swapping components in and out because some of these pre-filled liquid coolers, particularly this one, have much better mounting hardware than a lot of air coolers, making it easier to swap stuff on and off the bench. It uses a Corsair Neutron 128 gig SSD. Again, a more mainstream uh, SSD compared to the Neutron GTX, which is quite a bit more expensive. A GTX 760 Direct CU2. So the 760 is that gaming sweet spot in around that $200 price point. It has a TX 750 modular power supply. That's a pretty high end power supply, but the power supply doesn't affect performance. And finally, according to the script, it has an ASUS DVD writer, but I don't actually see one. And I mean, let's face it, you know, it's up to you guys whether you want to actually have an optical drive on your machine or not. So maybe that's the point we were trying to illustrate here. Some people like them, they want physical games for nostalgia or collection purposes, but this is, I guess, what you need if you're a Steam user for middle to high-end gaming. So it starts with Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which is easily replicable. It gives reports and reads and writes and megabytes per second, and gives us some idea how things perform, particularly useful for stuff like USB thumb drives. We've also got the Windows boot time. This is in Windows 8 with a disabled login screen. This is important because Windows 8 hides some of its loading by loading the login screen first and then using the time that you sit there typing in your password or whatever else to hide stuff in the background that it's still working on. So it's boot straight to desktop just because that's how we think probably most people are or should be using Windows 8, and has a standard suite of background applications and drivers plus Chrome. So basically how long before you're actually productive with the system. We've also got a StarCraft II load time test, which is an easily measurable load time without a splash screen. Graphics cards, all tests are 1080p because most people are still running 1080p. Maybe a year from now, we can look at reevaluating this when 2560 by 1440 becomes more relevant, but the benchmarks in order are 3D Mark, Fire Strike to give you that synthetic, Crisis 3 to give you that high-end actual real-world gaming setup, and then StarCraft 2, which is more useful for, I guess, if you're looking at more mainstream stuff, things like APUs. So for the two real game benchmarks, they're using the Linus Tech Tips method, Yo, so you can actually check out how to do that on the Linus Tech Tips channel. We show you the whole procedure so you can, you can run our benchmarks as well. For the CPU, Cinebench Super Pi 4M are used in order to evaluate them. I mean, other than that, you throw in some gaming benchmarks, that gives you a reasonable idea of how a CPU is gonna perform. For power supply, it's more like for power efficiency. So values are measured at the wall in terms of both idle and load with Prime 95 small FFT and Valley running. So that gives us some idea of the efficiency of the power supply, if nothing else. Let's face it, the equipment required to properly 
measure a power supply for performance, it costs thousands of dollars, so you should basically head over to johnnyguru.com if you really want to know how a power supply performs. So keep an eye, speaking of equipment actually, there will be some more equipment added, so there's a sound meter that got ordered so that we can compare the sound of reference cards to the sound of something else, and so stay tuned for more changes. But this, guys, in conclusion, is the PC against which future NCIX PCs will be compared so you know exactly what you are getting for your money. Thank you for checking out this week's episode of NCIX Tech Tips on the zero point benchmark machine. I should like throw it now to, to make my point about how it's a gravity gun. So, um, see, like I said, I'm being monitored here. I'm being given the shaking head. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.